All right, in this video, I am gonna talk about the city township of Houston, Pennsylvania. Now, Houston, Pennsylvania is in the lowest taxed county there is in the greater Pittsburgh area, and that is Washington County. When I say lowest taxed, I mean lowest real estate taxed. Now, what is the greater Pittsburgh area? The greater Pittsburgh area is defined as, you know, you're within driving distance to the downtown city of Pittsburgh. I, the way I look at it is, listen, are you a Pittsburgh Penguin fan? Are you a Pittsburgh Riverhound fan, Steeler fan, Pirate fan? You are in the greater Pittsburgh area if your zip code starts with 1-5. Um, it's about a 25 minute drive right down 79 or right up 79 into Pittsburgh. So the population of Houston PA is around 1,326 people. So between 1,300 and 1,400 people that does fluctuate over the years. So that's actually the last census that was done was done in 2010. So so that is down about 3% actually. Um, Houston, PA, I grew up in Cecil, Pennsylvania. So if you look here, there's Cecil, Pennsylvania. If you look here, there's Houston, Pennsylvania. Um, they are really close. Different school districts, same county, but really close. So I know Houston, P Pennsylvania really well. And I can tell you from being a native, I guess you would say, that Houston, Pennsylvania is was an older demographic. So the you know circle of life is um, having its way with Houston. That is the older folk are moving on and some younger folk that are looking for more bang for their buck or looking for a little bit more country life um, will be staying out of the Allegheny County, out of Pittsburgh and going to Houston. So we're starting to see more farmland being bought up and houses being thrown up, housing communities, etc. So the next census, mark my word, it is gonna be in an upward, that percentage is gonna go up, not down. So uh, let's talk about the average income. What type of people live there? The average income is just over $24,000 annually. And if we compare that to the United States average, uh, it's just over $28,000 annually. So, you know, we're not very far off. Houston, Pennsylvania isn't from the average of the uh, entire United States. The median household income is just over $41,000 a year. So you don't have, um, it's not a totally despot area and it's not a total luxury area. As a matter of fact, Houston PA, I'm thinking about the housing in Houston PA. I don't think there are any luxury housing at, uh, at all. Uh, I don't think you're going to find any million dollar ones. There might be a rare thing here or there, but nothing on the market um, at this at this stage. So in comparing the, the our average uh, and using a $41,000 annual income to the United States, the United States is, again, not much higher at 54,000, just a little bit over $54,000 annual income per year. So I had spoken the beginning of the video, which by the way, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, let's go ahead and do that now because there's a lot of good content coming on this channel and make sure you select all notifications so you don't lose anything. So in the beginning, I talked about uh, a little bit I touched on the age demographic, so to speak. So the median age demographic in Houston, PA is 41 years old. So just a little bit over 41 years old. So that kind I mean, that kind of 100% backs up exactly what I was saying. And that is some of the older seniors are moving on in whatever capacity, uh, you know, 70, 80 year olds are moving on. Those are the ones that kind of founded Houston, Pennsylvania. And we have some of the younger demographic coming in. So if you have an average of 41, you probably still have some 60 year olds that are um, lifers. A lot of Pittsburgh communities have lifers and that uh, my grandparents, et cetera, would, build a house. Their, them and their Uncle Joe and Jim would build the house and they would just live there forever. Way unlike what we have going on now. And that's a good thing because that keeps real estate agents like me in business. You keep on buying houses, live there three years, move on. So let's talk about jobs in Houston, Pennsylvania. I, I wouldn't say Houston, PA is a hub for employment. I would say it's more people live there and then drive to a job. Recent job growth in, in use in Pennsylvania is actually down and that is, uh, it's been down 7%. But you know, these are old polls. As a matter of fact, the United States is down 6.2%. So it's a downward trend on the last census. The unemployment rate in Houston, Pennsylvania is just under 8%. A lot of Houston Pennsylvanians are going to be country, um, farm, et cetera. The United States average unemployment is 6%. So again, I mean, we're a little bit higher, 2% um, higher, just under 2% higher, but 
it certainly isn't anything alarming. So the good news, and kind of what I was talking about, the regentrification of use in PA is the predicted job growth in use in Pennsylvania is going to be over 24%. So that is a hefty swing. So that more than makes up for that. That more than makes up for the 7% down they are. I mean, clearly you're going to take that 7% and go up another 20 or um, 18%. 17%, so the predicted 10-year job growth is good. And whenever you buy into an area, you move your house, move your family into an area, it's not about what's going on now, it's about what's predicted to happen to that community, that area. And as we all know, the economy is on its way up. It's been booming for a while. Um, on the predicted job, gro or job growth in use in Pennsylvania is over 24%, and we're gonna compare that to the United States, which is gonna be just over 33%. So all good news. You may not, you may think, oh, those numbers aren't all that great, but let me tell you, it's going the right direction up. So as a realtor, housing is one of my favorite things to talk about. So let's talk about the median house price in Houston, Pennsylvania. It was around $120,700 on the last census. But I mean, the market in the last four to six years has been booming. So I would imagine once the new census is in that you are going to see a, a, a growth um, on that price point. As a matter of fact, the this just, I have some numbers from the greater Pittsburgh area. We used to be, we used to hover around 140, 160, 180. In the last couple of months, we went up to half a uh, quarter of a million, 250,000 average price for a home in the greater Pittsburgh area. It's actually gone up to 281,000 in the last month. So that's a, I mean, we went years without having any appreciation in Pittsburgh. And in the last month or two, we went up $30,000. These numbers are definitely antiquated but this is all the data we have now. Keep in mind, when you move into Houston, you're buying in with built-in equity because these homes are gonna sell for more. They are going to appreciate. Why? Because there's a lot of land in Houston that's undeveloped, unlike the greater Pittsburgh area. And as developers develop that, the housing prices are gonna go up all the way around. It's gonna bring more um, economy, et cetera. All right, so let's talk about the cost of living. We already talked about what uh, the housing is, what the job prediction is. We're gonna talk about the cost of living now, which is an important factor to decide if you're going to move your family but you know something I do want to talk about is there are two amazing things that are in slash near Houston that are two big draws to the area the whole area Houston Cannonsburg Washington PA I'm gonna to touch on those briefly at the very end, so make sure you stick around to the end. Okay, cost of living. So overall, um, it's always on a scale of one to 100. 100 being the best, anything lower than that uh, is gonna be cheaper. Overall, Houston, Pennsylvania ranks, ranks at an 83. Pennsylvania is 92 and USA, which uh, is the norm, um, sets the benchmark is 100. But if we wanna break it down, let's just say you have a, let's just say you have a family budget. Do you have a family budget? Comment below if you have a family budget. I don't have a family budget, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. But then again, I don't have a family, so I don't need to have a family budget. But a lot of times when I represent buyers, um, they may have a budget and I always ask them and I even try to hint to them and, and, and being a realtor, it's not my job to be their finance guy as well, but do you have a family budget? What is a family budget? A family budget is you look at how much money you have coming in and how much money you have going out. So going out would be some of the things I'm gonna hit on right now. For instance, in Houston, PA, the average cost of groceries or the, the ranking is around 100.7. So it's a little bit higher than the United States average for groceries. Uh, 100.7 but Pennsylvania I mean our whole state is like that it's 100.3 health is gonna be right split down the middle right around 52 Penn state of Pennsylvania is 75 again the United States sets the bench sets the benchmark at 100 utilities 87.7 Pennsylvania 98 transportation 99 Pennsylvania 104 so Pennsylvania is a little bit higher as a state um, to have transportation than the United States again just so we understand what's going on 100 is the benchmark anything over that is more expensive under that is less expensive so you want to be on, on the lower number for those cost of living numbers if you are thinking about moving into the Houston area and you want to rent let's just say you plan on buying but maybe you're not in a position uh, to buy maybe you don't have a job locked down maybe you just want to rent there and see if that's the area for you i'm going to give you some numbers that will help you make that decision so the average rent for a studio apartment is right around 600 dollars, just a little bit over one bedroom just under 700 at 676 dollars 
two bedrooms, um, $836. And if you have a family with a couple kids, it's gonna be a three bedroom would be your best bet. And that'll be a little over $1,000. All right, so we touched on cost of living, um, real estate prices, job growth, unemployment. So trying to make a complete picture on if Houston, if you could live in Houston, PA, we're going to talk about crime real quick. Everybody has crime. You're not going to find very, you're going to find very few places that do not have any crime. So the United, just to give you an idea, uh, the United States average of violent crime is 22.7. Houston, PA is super low and you're going to find this when you're out in the cut. Again, I'm from Cecil. I'm from the cut. So no insult intended. Um, but the further away you get from a densely populated area like the city, typically the crime goes down. So the United States for violent crime, again, 22.7. Houston is coming in at a super low number of 8.8%. That's amazing. Super safe. Uh, the only other stat for crime we really want to talk about is property crime. The last one was violent crime. This one is property crime. Again, to set a benchmark, the United States average is 35.4% um, property crime. And Houston coming in at half of that number, it's right around 17% property crime. I would imagine, you know, it's maybe one farmer pissed off at the other farmer and stealing their tractor. I'm just kidding. Again, I'm from the area. I can make those jokes. So when it comes to education, uh, the school district is a small short years Houston. They have two public schools and one private. And again, when you're out in the cut, you're spread out really far. So you're not going to have a lot of schools. Conversely, if you were to move into the city, there's, you know, there's schools densely populated all over the place. All right. So the schools spend about just over $16,000 per student. So how does that stack up against the United States average? So schools across the entire United States average spend just a little bit over $12,000 per student. So Houston is spending a little bit more. Breaking down the schools a little bit further to help you with your education decision, there are about 14 pupils, not these kind of pupils, student pupils per teacher. So 14 pupils or students per teacher. Uh, student counselors, there's just about, there's about 578 students per student counselor. So when it comes to going to college, uh, just a little bit over 10% uh, do go to college. And comparing that to the state of Pennsylvania, just a little over 8% go to college. And breaking that down to the greater Pittsburgh area, 9.9% .9 go to college. So you can see Houston's above the average. Why would that be? Well, I would imagine growing up as a farm child, um, you may be tired of shoveling shit and you're like, I got to get to college to get me a white collar job or a good blue collar job and get it in the city. I know a lot of people, as a matter of fact, I'm a perfect example of that. Now, I didn't shovel shit, but I did grow up again in Cecil out in the country and uh, I am now currently live in the city limits of Pittsburgh. And I love the country. There's no doubt about it. Um, you may love the country now, but that may change um, as you get older. So I used to love the country when I was a kid riding dirt bikes, football, hockey, baseball, and all that. As I became an adult, I like to do, I find myself going into the city a lot, the city of Pittsburgh a lot. So um, eventually I just moved into the city and in my 40 year, 40 year, um, age demographic I'm in now. Um, I definitely quit riding dirt bikes because I like to stay alive. So there's not much of a need for me to be out in the country. Um, you can always go out there if you have horses or chickens, goats, alpacas, you can go out there but still live in the city and kind of enjoy both. So in the college, how many have made it to the master's program? So out of Houston, PA, it's 0.2%. 0.2%. So you might think, wow, that's a low number. That's immediately what I thought of. But the state of Pennsylvania only comes in at a 1.9%. So, I mean, the, the, we all, master's degrees aren't for everybody. They're not easy to get. Um, so there's a small pop percentage that goes. As a matter of fact, the city of Pittsburgh has the highest of the three, Houston, state of Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, at 2.1% earning their master's degrees. So we got everything else figured out. Let's talk about our health. One of the things I always say is it doesn't matter how much money you have or how big of a house you have if you don't have your health. So what do the residents of Houston, PA have to look at for health? There are 171 physicians per every 100,000 residents. Um, again, 171 for Houston. Let's compare that. Again, point of reference, the United States is about 210. So Houston isn't very far off. A health cost index, it's 88.4 for the health index of um, Houstonites. Houstonites. Houston residents, whatever. Um, and that is the, the lower, the better. So it's 88.4 out of 100. So it's keeping in the quality, health quality um, category. 
the water quality index is 33 out of 100 and the country, the whole country, United States is a 55. So we're not too far off there again. Last qual health quality index we're gonna talk about is super important and that is the air quality, the air you breathe. And Houston is a 55 out of 100 and this one, the higher the number, the better. So we're right in the um, center there and I can tell you, decades ago, um, Houston PA had a lot of industrial and coal type companies. So I would imagine our air quality may still be suffering from previous uh, manufacturing plants. All right, so did you hit the subscribe button? Ba boom! I know you're finding this information on Houston PA, super helpful. A lot of people are planning on moving to Houston PA. There are no videos anywhere on YouTube. I have the only video about Houston, Pennsylvania. So we're about halfway through. Something else I thought was really important whenever I was kind of coming up with the um, information is the people. What kind of people do we have in Houston, PA? Sure, you can maybe drive around and walk around, but you need the detailed information I have it. So the number of peeps per household is about 2.2. Again, I love to give you a reference. Um, the average in the United States is 2.6. So 2.2 people, humans per household. Of those, about 49, just under 50% are married, just a little over 12% are divorced, and we're talking about married with children, not the show, and if you know the show, you are in my age demographic, married with children. Do, 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 love and marriage. Okay, anyway, um, there are about 28.6% uh, people that live in Houston that are married with children. Now, you know, divorce is an unnecessary, uh, hmm? divorce is a necessary thing for some families and we have 8.2% that live in Houston that have children and are not married. Oh, okay, so, uh, you know, I lied. We're a little beyond the halfway point of this video. <laughs> We're gonna talk about some of my favorite things and I try to put these in all my could you live here um, vlogs and that is bakery, coffee, ice cream type stuff. If you live in Houston, what are your options for bakery coffee? The first one is, the first one is Fortuit Cafe. That's F-O-R-T-U-I-T-E-A, Fortuit Cafe. Now I actually, I stopped there one time for a smoothie and they didn't have it. They were just getting the shop um, set up post you know what. And it's actually in the very, very cool place. It's called the Shops at Quail Acres. And they are, again, I was looking for a smoothie at the time and they didn't have any ready they're going to, but they they are definitely a bakery, I can tell you that. <clears throat> I'm a, I have a huge weakness for bakeries. And when I went in there, they were like making all these, putting all the icing on all these cakes and cookies and everything everywhere. And I have a lot of weak moments in bakeries. Actually, every moment of mine in a bakery is weak. But the savior was it was early in the morning and I just can't eat the baked goods early in the morning. Anyway, I digress. So it is a coffee and it had a bunch of coffee there as well. Coffee and bakery. Um, and I think they're going to have smoothies and all that for you smoothie heads coming soon. And that's in the shops of Quail Acres, which is, um, we'll put up a little map right here, but it's not far from the highway and not far from um, the meadows which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. The next coffee shop I'm gonna talk about is the Coffee Express-O, and this is going to be at the Tanger Outlet. So listen, if you're walking around an outlet mall, when it's cool or cool weather, and maybe when it's hot if you're a coffee addict like I am, you need some coffee. You know, the, the wife, the girlfriend's dragging you around and you're like, dragging ass, and you just need a little bit of shot of caffeine, get a little espresso, good to go. All right, so the last place we're gonna talk about is one of my favorites and it hits all of my buttons and that is the Crazy Horse Cafe. And it is veteran owned. Um, I know him personally. Uh, big tall gentleman and you if you're there you will probably see him as well does a lot of stuff for the military a lot of veteran stuff donations charity events in the parking lot um, for instance last year in 2020 uh, we had he had exotic car shows every other I think it was every other Saturday in the parking lot and um, I don't quote me uh, I think he gives a portion of his proceeds um, from coffees and all that to different charities but so the reason why i love this place is it's a uh it's not chain owned which nothing against chain owned restaurants i have my fair share of starbucks and panera but i do like the little cafes one-off um, family owned type of thing so he has coffee beans and ground coffee you know that they make that they sell that i i love to get that stuff and take it home and make it on my own they have all kind of you know bad bad for you bad for your um 
Spare tire area, amazing looking bakery items. Uh, again, I was there in the morning, thank God. Uh, but I had a smoothie, with some sort of peanut butter smoothie, which was out of this world. And what else did I have? Oh, they have um, yogurt parfaits, which I'm a big fan of. They actually sold out. And of course, they had coffee. So I had coffee there as well. Crazy Horse Cafe, you can, there's limited seating outside, um, and, but there's a bunch of seating inside. And it's got, you know, the couches and all that. But you can just take everything and you can buy it and take everything with you as well. It's just as good. So Crazy Horse Cafe, love it. Okay, I can see it. We're zeroing in on the end. We're gonna talk about we talked about all the other good stuff that you needed to do to research whether you wanted to move into the Houston area. Now we are going to talk about to do. What do you do when you live in the Houston PA area? So the first thing we're going to talk about is the Pumpkin Festival. You're probably not going to find a lot of information on the internet if you look for the Pumpkin Festival. Again, I only know it because I am a native to the neighboring community, which was Cecil, but we would always come over for the Pumpkin Festival. It's in the fall um, and it's, it's mainly, it's definitely family oriented orientated oriented whatever the word is and if you have small children it's amazing they have like those little rock climbing walls they have a, a petting a little petting zoo um, I mean I'm going back whenever I was younger so I don't exactly know what they have now but they had a little train that they would put you and the little kids in they had a little fenced in area where they would have different size horses and the owners would hold the uh, reins and put the ch children on there I'd walk around face painting all kind of you know, homemade baked goods um, from the people that live in the community, of course, pumpkin pies and all that. It's always in the fall, so the leaves are always turning as well. So if you are family oriented, which clearly I am not, because I don't know what the word is, uh, this will be a definite circle on your calendar. The next thing is huge. It's the Washington County Fair. I can't say 100% that I know the Washington County Fair is in Houston. I actually don't think it is. I think it's in the next community over, which is Washington. Um, so there's a city of Washington and then there's the county of Washington, but I think the Washington County Fair touches Houston and it's the pumpkin festival on steroids. I mean, they have roller coasters and all these rides and they have tractor pools they have like not the mini horses like they had at the pumpkin festival they have pigs alpacas llamas chickens i mean you take your this is a good a good place to introduce your young children to farm animals i mean we used to love it for me it was always a reason to go there and just blow apart um, my diet and eat whatever I want funnel cakes with Snickers on top um, it's it's usually in the hot weather so it's in the summer I remember sweating a lot so we always have like ice cold ice cream lemonade amazing place and then they had some in one of the stables they had some sort of horse thing that was going on I don't know if it was a race or a show or something like that as a child I wasn't too interested in it I was more interested in the truck to, uh, tractor pulls and they would also have a smash up derby which I thought was awesome but the Washington County Fair is huge I mean it's not just people from Washington County that come there I mean it's horse lovers car lovers people lovers all from all over would come to the Washington County Fair that is it's a week long that is definitely something you want to circle on your calendar the pumpkin festival is a weekend long I do believe um, but it's huge you can't miss it so if you're in the baseball uh, we have a wild things baseball park and you, know, you can grab a game uh, you can oh, certainly drive into the city of Pittsburgh but like I said that's you know 20 to 30 minute drive if there's traffic it can get up to an hour so the wild things baseball is right down in the Washington uh, area hop skip and a jump check it out so something interesting uh, I'm sort of interesting and definitely rare is the Pennsylvania trolley museum now some of you youngins may have to actually google what the hell a trolley is uh, we don't really have them anymore uh, I think they have um, something similar down in the city, but we definitely don't call it trolleys. So it started out um, with only three trolleys. And if you go to the Washington County Fair, it's on the same place as where the trolley museum is. And um, you can even, I think you can get a ride in the trolley from the parking lot if you have to park real far away because again the washington county fair is huge you can get a ride on one of these trolleys to the washington county it's it's not very fast and not very uh far but it's really cool to see it um so the the trolley museum started off with only three trolleys because you can imagine tr finding trolleys is uh out of service trolleys that or actually worth something is not very easy and it, it, it's grown it's grown pretty well it's grown to over 50 trolleys and they have mem they sell memberships there there's over 600 members um, to the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum and that's worldwide they have 150 volunteers and they have over 30,000 visitors annually so 
You probably want to check that out. It's a good rainy day activity. So I know what you're thinking. Are these trolleys in the museum just sitting in the museum and you can, you know, you just take a tour through them? Can you ride on them? Yes, they do offer rides on some of these trolleys. To take it one step further, they actually have events where you can drive the trolley. You probably can't imagine driving a trolley because you don't even know what a trolley is. I'm telling you, Google a trolley. A trolley is this thing right here. Bye, trolley. So how much does it cost for adults to get into a trolley museum? It's $12 for adults, $11 for seniors, and $10 for, $10 for children, one to 15. So it's, you know, in today's day and age, it's relatively inexpensive uh, to take the family there and have a, a day's worth of entertainment. Again, great rainy day or winter activity. So some of the offerings the trolley museum has is gonna be scenic trolley rides. They do guided tours. Um, they'll have exhibits and orientation films, so you can kind of see how this can take up a good part of the day with a family. They have a trolley simulator. Of course, they have a store with swag, a little picnic area. Uh, again, you're not in the city, so you don't have to worry about paying for parking. They do offer um, uh, rentals for events like you know birthdays, company picnics, reunions, corporate meetings, etc. And that, my friends, is what the Trolley Museum is all about. Again, I don't know very many, but Houston PA has one. I highly recommend checking it out. All right, so my two bonus things at the end, the biggest draws of the Houston PA area that I wanted to talk about is the first one is the Tanger Outlets. Okay, so for those of you that know what outlets are, I don't have to talk too much about it. For those of you that don't know what outlets are is, it's like a mall pretty much a lot of times without a roof. So it's usually outdoor shopping with a whole bunch of stores connected and they offer reduced um, prices on the items. And I can't say I know why their items are reduced. Maybe they're out of season. Maybe they are, um, are leftovers. Maybe they ordered them in bulk. I don't know, but there, are, there aren't any luxury stores. So you're not gonna get a Dolce & Gabbana store there, but they have stuff like Calvin Klein, Nike, Adidas. I know I've gone there for Adidas stuff before. If you have um, small children and you want to get something relatively nice but not have to pay a lot for it, and who doesn't? The outlets may be few. There's a lot of baby stores and teenager stores and stuff like that at the Tanger Outlets. Uh, there's a coffee shop I already talked about. There's restaurants in and around the area. And there are also hotels and motels if you are coming. Um, and let's just say you're watching this video and you're... <coughs> and you're in Wisconsin, you're thinking about moving to the greater Pittsburgh area, maybe you checked out downtown Lawrenceville area and decided that's just a little too condensed for you. So you started looking out in the suburbs a little bit more and you found Houston, PA. Um, you may want to come into town to explore it a little bit. You can stay at the hotel, go to the Tanger Outlets and explore Houston, PA and then call me uh, to help you find a home. Okay, so that's all the Tanger Outlets. I didn't want to dive too deep uh, into the Tanger Outlets. It's If you wanted to know the stores and all that, I just recommend going to their website because they do change kind of often. So I don't want this video to be too, too outdated talking about a store that's no longer there. But we, what we are going to talk about in depth is my number two draw to the Houston area. And I'm glad you waited to the end. And that is going to be the Meadows Casino Hotel and Racetrack. Now, this place has a little bit for everyone. As soon as you hear casino, you're like, I don't like to gamble. Okay, well, maybe there's a racetrack. I don't like to watch horses race for money or dogs or chickens or whatever they race there. Okay, maybe you go to the casino. Maybe you don't like any of that stuff. It's just a place to relax. So I'm gonna dive in just a little bit. So to first talk about the casino, they have over 2,500 slot machines. So a little bit different than a Vegas style or Atlantic City style, but again, keep in mind, you are in Houston, Pennsylvania. 2,500 slot machines on the floor is a pretty good number. And I'm telling you, people come from all around the area, West Virginia, Ohio, the other side of Pennsylvania, even further out to come to the Meadows because it is a relatively new place. I think it was built within the last five to 10 years. So everything is new there. And they have 6,500 table games. 14 table uh, poker room and of course they have a sports book so my experience going over there is um, events uh, i'm not a big gambler or casino hanger outer but i've been there for weddings corporate meetings one of them the builders association of metropolitan pittsburgh had an event there two years ago at the bowling alley so they have a bowling alley there and uh, 
with a bar and a little restaurant attached. And we had our meeting there at the bowling alley, which is really cool. They have trade shows there, social gathering areas. Again, just like um, if you've ever been to Vegas or Atlantic City and you think of, um, you stay at the casino and they have all the big rooms broken up for meetings. I know um, Remax is the brokerage I work for in Pittsburgh and we got to Vegas and they always have big rooms. There's a lot of um, social gatherings, meetings, breakout rooms and stuff like that. The Meadows Racetrack and Hotel and Casino has that as well. Okay, as I said, it's horse racing. If you're into horses, you know uh, the Meadows. That's a big deal. It's it's been around forever. They, they refreshed it, I'd say, five or ten years ago. But the Meadows has been around forever. So horse racing, man, I'm 49. Horse racing is horse racing has been there. Every, as, as long as I can remember, it's nothing new. So let's talk about entertainment again. Maybe, like I said, maybe you have some family members that are into gambling that want to go there. Maybe you have some that are into horse racing. So you can kind of go your different directions. Um, when it comes to entertainment, there is a place called the H Lounge. So at the H Lounge, you can catch all the hottest bands, cover bands, et cetera, in the tri-state area. Uh, performing every Friday and Saturday. So that's your entertainment. You know, if you have family members who are trying to drag you down there and you don't want to go, try to get them there on a Friday and Saturday night because you'll have something to do. You can go to the H Lounge, check out some live bands. Who doesn't love live music? So some of the bands are going to be just local talent. Uh, you're going to have some tribute bands. You're going to have some cover bands. And you may have some original bands coming through as well. I did talk about bowling, bowling already, but just want to give you a little bit, a little bit more um, of a graphic picture. There's 24 synthetic AMF lanes. That AMF, I threw that in there for you bowlers that know what AMF means. But for us recreational bowlers, we don't give a crap. It's got wooden lanes that you're going to go into the gutter every single time. And as I mentioned, the um, Builders Association of Metropolitan Pittsburgh rented out the lanes. There's actually, you have all the lanes, 20, um, 20 lanes, and then you have four lanes that are in a VIP lounge. So it's kind of glassed off so you can see people outside and or out, outside the VIP, inside the VIP, and you can walk in and they'll, they'll have food catered for you as well. So great for um, birthdays and again, immediate work meetings, etc. All right. So the last thing we're going to talk about and the last thing in this whole video is going to be dining. First place option you have is the Parlay Lounge. The next thing is going to be the Carvery. So a little bit about the Carvery I want you to know is it has views of the racetrack. So I don't know about you guys, but I mean, whenever I like to go out and eat, I love to have something to look at, live music. Um, views of the racetrack would be pretty darn cool, I think. So what type of food is it? So the parlay is more of a lounge. You know, you're, you're, you're out with the stalls and you want to come in and have something to eat. That's what the parlay would be. But the uh, carvery is a little bit more upscale, but still have comfort food. Now I've been to this next place and it's called Bisteca. It has views of the horse racing and it has views of the um, casino floor, which is really cool. It depends where you sit. I can't say there's a table where you get both views. It's one or the other, but this is definitely a high end area. So you can break out your best Gucci, your best Robert Graham, whatever, and you'll be, you'll fit right in. So what type of food is Bisteca? It is an award winning steakhouse and I've had their steaks and they are definitely award winning, but it does have an Italian flair as well. So if you're in town and you wanna get some of those carbs, because maybe you're racing your horse tomorrow, Bisteca is where you want to be. So the next place is going to be more of a, it's more geared towards gourmet burgers. It's called The Eatery and um, it is owned and run by sh uh, celebrity chef, celebrity chef Fabio Viviani. Okay, next is the pub. The pub is at the bowling alley, so you can get your fish and chips, you can get your nuts, and you can pair that with just a ton of craft beers. They have over 60 craft beers there. It's, you know, even though it's a pub, it's still in the meadows, and they don't really have bar food. So it's like, bar, there's bar food, and then there's the pub food. It's the next level up. But as you can see, the picture I'm painting here, the Meadows Casino Racetrack and Hotel has everything you need to spend a good weekend or a couple days or even a couple hours. So they also have a pub track, the, the pub track side. So you have the pub, which is inside, and then they have the pub track side, which is outdoors. If um, you want to, if you're dirty from uh, racing your horses and you want to, you're stepping in horse shit all day long and you, but you still want to get something to eat, you can go to the pub track side. And the last thing they have is actually a Miller Lite brew house. So for all you beer heads, uh, craft beers, uh, regular beers, old style beers, that is gonna be the place for you. Okay, so that was a lot of information about could you live in Houston, PA. Hopefully I painted the picture that um, will help you make that decision. And as always, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel, put some comments below. If you wanna see me do another video, let me know if this was helpful, helpful to you at all. And by all means, if you're thinking about buying a house, 
anywhere in the greater Pittsburgh area, make sure you contact me.